Hello and welcome to Every Persona Explained, where we take a look at the origin and representation of every persona. And today we're taking a look at Jack O' Lantern. Jack O' Lantern is based on the Irish story of Stingy Jack. Now there are a few different versions of the story, but we're going to go over two versions in this video. The first is the version that I was most familiar with before researching, and the second is the version I found while researching and shows Jack as a little bit unhinged, which is a lot more entertaining. So one day the devil was out for a walk, which he apparently does, and happened upon a couple of people talking about someone called Stingy Jack, who was just the worst. Well, the devil thought that this Stingy Jack sounded like his kind of guy and decided to go and search for him. He eventually found Jack and was all like, Hey, Jackie boy, it's me, the devil. Time to go to hell. Now, Jack wasn't exactly on board with this plan, so he came up with an idea. He asked that he be allowed to go to a pub and drink one last time. The devil, not seeing a problem with this, agrees. And the two of them head off to the nearest pub. After a satisfactory amount of alcohol, Jack goes, So, this is kind of awkward, but I left my wallet at home. Could you pay the bill so we could be on our way? The devil, being the devil, doesn't carry money, because why would he? So Jack says, hey, why won't you just turn it into a coin, and we can pay that way? The devil thought, yeah, that makes sense, and proceeded to turn it into a coin, and Jack proceeded to stuff that coin into his pocket, one that happened to contain a crucifix. This depowered the devil and left him stuck there until he agreed to leave Jack alone for a period of time, somewhere between 1 and 10 years, stories vary. After that period of time was up, the devil shows up again, but Jack was prepared. He asked the devil if he could have a fruit from a nearby tree before they left. The devil, not learning from his last interaction with Jack, agrees and climbs the tree to get the fruit. As he did, Jack quickly surrounded the tree with crosses, I assume he just carved them into the ground, trapping the devil in the tree. Jack only agreed to let him down if the devil promised to never let Jack into hell. The devil agreed and then left. Well, Jack eventually died and couldn't get into heaven because, you know, he sucked. And he tried to get into hell instead. But when he got there, the devil told him, Sorry bud, promise is a promise, but hey, I'll give you this burning hell coal to light your travels while you're wandering the earth until judgment day. Probably while wearing sunglasses and gesturing at him with finger guns. So Jack stuck the coal into a turnip, famously immune to hellfire, and wandered to the earth unto this day. So that's the version I was familiar with. But I found another version in the 1851 rhyme book by Irishman Hercules Ellis. That's a good name. In this version, Stingy Jack still sucks. However, one day on the way home from somewhere, he happened upon someone in need. So Jack took them home, fed them, and let them rest for the night. The next day, the stranger revealed himself to be an angel, and that this was a character test. The angel told Jack that he didn't think Jack was as bad as everyone said, and that he'd grant Jack three wishes. Guess he was moonlighting as a genie. So Jack made his three wishes. That anyone who sat in his chair would be stuck there until Jack released them. That anyone who tried to take something out of his toolbox would be trapped until Jack let them go. And that anyone who tried to harm his favorite sycamore tree would be trapped by it until Jack released them. What Jack failed to realize is that this was also part of the test, and he failed. The angel grants his wishes, but bars him from entering heaven, and leaves. Time passes and it's time for Jack to die, so the devil sent one of his demons to go collect him. Upon arrival, Jack offered the demon to have a seat and rest, so the demon sat down in Jack's chair and became trapped. Jack then produced a flail and proceeded to beat the literal hell out of the demon until it promised to leave and never come back. The next day, the devil sent another demon to try and collect Jack. This time, Jack asked him to grab something out of his toolbox. So he reached into the toolbox and became trapped. And then Jack proceeded to beat him with a flail until he promised to never come back. So on the third day, the devil himself decides to come and collect Jack. Jack asked the devil if he could get him a walking stick to make the journey easier on him. Maybe from that old sycamore tree. Those of you with pattern recognition know what followed. 
In order to be released, the devil promised to never take Jack to hell. Eventually, Jack dies and can't get into either heaven or hell. Jack wanders the planet until Judgment Day with only a coal from hell stuck into a turd. Now, there is something missing from these stories. Pumpkins. Pumpkins aren't native to Europe, originating in the Americas. So the original jack-o'-lanterns were carved turnips, which, looking at some examples, y yeah, that's terrifying. So how did we get from turnips to pumpkins? Well, immigration. As the Irish immigrated to the U.S., they brought and adapted their stories, including the tale of Stingy Jack, switching out the turnip for the bigger pumpkin. So why is his head a pumpkin? Neither of the versions here, and none of the variants I found said anything about his head being a pumpkin. But before researching this video, the version that was in my head had Jack losing his head and replacing it with a pumpkin. While it's possible that there's a variant out there that's like that, and that's the one I eternalized, I think, I think, there might be some syncretizing going on here with the story of the Headless Horseman of Sleepy Hollow. To any percent speedrun that story, a Hessian soldier from the American Revolutionary War takes a cannonball to the head and unsurprisingly dies. After which his ghost searches for his atomized head, and until he can find it, he uses a pumpkin as a replacement. Now it's possible that it's just me, but two wandering spirits carrying around pumpkins? I think it's possible there was some overlap. That leaves us with the final question of why? Why is this story a story? Aside from it being a morality tale, it helps explain the strange lights that sometimes appear in marshes and bogs, quite common in Ireland, which has a fancy Latin name, Ignis Fatus. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. What actually causes these lights is the breakdown of organic matter, letting off flammable gas. And while it's super interesting, that's not what this video is about, so we'll skip it. It is interesting to note, though, that this is also the origin of the Will of the Wisp. And that's Jack O' Lantern, the wandering spirit that tricked the devil or beat the hell out of him, one or the other. So, how's this in-game representation? I'd say it's pretty good. While not reflecting on Jack kinda just being a guy, it definitely gets across the whole wandering spirit vibe that Jack ends up with, including the traveling cloak he wears. And it doubles down on the lanterns, having just a regular one and the pumpkin one. Jack is classified in the Lover's Arcana in P1, Innocent Sin, and Eternal Punishment, and Magician in the P3s, P4s, P5s, and PQs, that's too many P's. Lovers doesn't really make sense, at least not in its upright position. When reversed, it can mean imbalance and bad choices. Jack's poor life choices led him to wandering the earth between life and death forever, so arguably not bad. Magician also works well in its reversed position, representing manipulation and trickery. I, I don't think I need to explain why that fits. Jack-o'-lantern has been in the game since P1, and in every instance he's had some kind of fire move. He got various status and passive skills throughout the years, but most of them are unnoteworthy, with the exception of a skill he has in P1, Hula of Misfortune, which inflicts unlucky status. Interesting. His shadow name is Crypt Dwelling Pyromaniac, which doesn't really fit, as Jack didn't hang out in graveyards, and his fire aspect really only relates to his lantern. His trait is Thermal Conduct, increasing burn odds, which, again, is related to his lantern. It's almost like the lantern's important or something. When itemized, he produces either the Pumpkin Bomb or Pumpkin Buster weapon for Ryuji. These are shotguns with a chance to leave enemies with a burn. Overall, I'd say it's pretty good representation, although it could use more flail. Thank you very much for watching. So this was the longest script I've written to date, which I wouldn't have guessed would be on Jack-O-Lantern, but hey, you know, it do be like that. Don't forget to comment down below on who you want to see next. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Every Persona Explained.